All right, everyone, and we are back. So let's go ahead and um, each engineering discipline has their um, kind of schematic or picture that shows uh, or tries to summarize their um, their discipline. Um, some of them, they're effective to varying degrees, but, and this is not just from a biased material science uh, <laughs> perspective, I think materials, uh, engineering and material science and engineering has actually the best structure. So, or the best kind of schematic that explains their discipline. So um, ours is this materials tetrahedron. Um, and I think it really, you know, one of the unique aspects about material science engineering in, and in this class too, everything builds upon each other. Um, so it's, we're going to be talking about things now that are not going to make any sense, but at the end of the semester, you're going to see how they all connect and how the whole picture comes into play. And then you'll realize essentially a lot of the things that we were, <laughs> that we were doing. So, um, there are four corners of the materials tetrahedron. Um, the materials tetrahedron angles are, it's around 109 degrees. I want to say, um, uh, anyways, uh, but there are four corners to the materials tetrahedron structure. Um, I believe it's spelled correctly. Uh, properties, uh, processing, and performance. Um, and then at the center is characterization, modeling, experiments. This is us at the center. Um, and these are all things when we're trying to understand materials. We are engineers. So we're trying to figure out what are the tunable parameters? What can we change about materials to change their behavior and their properties and their performance? Uh, and what process can we do? So typically, um, or you can go kind of the inverse process, but they all kind of intertwine. They're all essentially these key structure, these key corners here where they must exist. We must touch and um, basically exist together. Otherwise, we'll fall apart. Um, so these are kind of the four corners. And so the way that we kind of interpret um, the materials tetrahedron is, I'll, I'll give an example. Usually that's the best way. So I was working in the metallurgy field, and we would make basically very, very, very thin sheets of titanium. So these thin titanium sheets were our final goal. Um, but we would start off with this huge ingot. Uh, and the ingot would be, you know, it could be, it could be huge. It could be, you know, 10 feet high, 20 feet high, 30 feet high, you know, et cetera. Um, and we would take that ingot and then we would, to get it to thin sheets of titanium, titanium is quite expensive. It's about $120 per pound, at least back in the day when I knew those, <laughs> when I was trying to sell the titanium sheets. Um, but you take that ingot and you cold, you basically roll it. You put it through these gigantic rollers and you roll that ingot thin. Um, when you do that and you cold roll that material, the sheet has what's called these, you're, you're going to change the structure and you're going to create these dislocations in the material. So let's take a step back here. So I want to make basically a higher strength titanium uh, sheets. Um, so the process to create those sheets is basically this cold rolling process. In that cold rolling process, I'm changing the structure here, effectively the microstructure of titanium by creating these dislocations. These dislocations make it more difficult for the material to relieve stress and the strength of that material increases significantly. So I've done a process which has changed the structure of my material. That change in structure has had an effect in the property, specifically my yield stress increases. Also, my strain at failure decreases. Again, these are all things that we're going to come back to. Um, uh, <laughs> we're going to come back to later on in this course. And thus, by doing a process which has changed the structure and has changed, and that process and that change in structure has changed the corresponding properties of material, and therefore they will change the performance. This cold rolled titanium now can apply, you know, basically due to that change in my yield strength. It can be applied or it can work in essentially these high yield strength um, applications. Alternatively, let's say I don't, I want d something that's ductile. I don't really care. I need something that can stretch. I can do another operation on this and actually anneal. I can put it in a furnace, high temperatures for high time, and eventually these dislocations will diffuse out to the surface of my material and they'll disappear effectively. By doing annealing, my yield strength decreases, but my strain at fracture, my, my ductility increases significantly. So 
there's lots of different examples, um, and we'll talk about cross-linked rubber too. Um, there's another video that I have on my YouTube channel that talks about that. So um, it's a fantastic way to look at and investigate and think about essentially all the different types of materials that we're going to think about and how we can connect them. Um, one of the mantras of this course, especially at the beginning, is going to be structure dictates properties. Structure, structure, structure dictates properties. Later on, we'll see the processes that change that structure, but that's what we're going to be focused on in the first part of this course. Now, next time, we are going to get into a famous atomic experiment, and then we'll get into um, Bragg. Uh, so we'll see you all next time. Thanks. Bye. Oops, dropped my pen.